Hello, everyone. Today, I would like to introduce our recent work, Privacy Preserving and Standard Compatible, aka Protocol for 5G, by Yu Chen Wang, Zhen Feng Zhang, and Yong Xuanxie, from Institute of Software, Chinese Academy of Sciences, and Alibaba Group, and Commercial Cryptography Testing Center of State Cryptography Administration. First, I would like to introduce the 5G standardization and 5G AKA protocol. The 3GPP consortium has started the standardization of 5G since 2015. In TS33.501, the 3GPP consortium has proposed the 5G authentication and the key agreement protocol, that is 5G AKA. It enables mutual authentication and key agreement between user equipment and the home network. It also includes many design characters from 3G or 4G AKA. It also makes progress on protecting users' privacy by disallowing the plaintext transmission of SOPI over the radio, whereas SOPI is the user's identifier. In particular, SOPI is encrypted with ECIES and sent as an concealed SOPI or SOCI, which avoids the SOPI catching attack. However, some recent work found that 5G AKA cannot protect users' privacy against pa active attackers, compared with passive attacker, which, only, which can only monitor the radio traffic passively. An active attacker can emit radio signal actively and distinguish attack UE by replaying its messages. An active attacker can link the attack UE with its private session. Such, attack, such attacks are also known as linkability attacks. The active attacker can monitor the target UE or infer the user's real-world identity. Now, several kinds of linkability attacks has been, have been discovered. They are the failure message linkability attack, the sequence number inference attack, and the encrypt SOPI replay attack. Moreover, linkability attacks may break FileJK's protection for SOPI as an attacker can link a 5G target UE with its 3G or 4G AKA session, which, include, which includes plain text as OPI. Such cross-protocol attacks are possible in practice, as many vendors support reusing 3G or 4G, AKA, 4G SIM cards, and many open-source 5G communication solutions are available. An attacker may perform linkability attacks with, accept with acceptable calls, as in 3G or 4G error. Thus, the improvement of 5G AKA is necessary and urgent. However, fixed 5G AKA is not a trivial task, as several linkability attacks must be fixed in one shot. And the fix should be compatible with current 5G specifications, as a non-compatible non proposal will be cumbersome to be de deployed in practice. If it is not compatible with SIM card, it will require the vendor to change SIM cards for all users. If it is not compatible with certain networks, it will require all SNs to change their implementations accordingly. Thus, our goal is to fix all linkability attacks while preserving SIM card and SN compatibilities so that, so that it can be deployed in a way of reusing SIM cards and SN implementations where only both endpoints need to be updated. Before we give the detail of our proposal, I will introduce some background for 5G AKA and the linkability attacks. The 5G AKA protocol is, consists of the initiation phase and the challenge response phase. In the initiation phase, SOPI is encrypted with ECIS by the UE and sent to the HN. In the challenge response phase, the HN generates a random challenge denoted by RAND and an auth N message. The auth N message includes a MAC value of RAND keyed with the UE's long-term key and a concealed sequence number. Then the UE takes RAND out N as the input for SIM card command authenticate. The authenticated command will check MAC and check the message's freshness. If the check on MAC fails, it will output MAC failure. If the check on, on freshness fails, it will output synchronization failure. If all check pass, it will output a response and a session key that will be used for subsequent 5G procedure procedures. In the failure message linkability attack, the attacker replays RAND and AUSN. The target UE will reply with SIG failure. The non-target UE will reply with MAC failure. The sequence number inference attack is a variant of the failure message linkability attack. 
where the attacker can infer the target UE's sequence number increase pattern on the basis of linkability. In the encrypted SOPI replay attack, the, the attacker can reply the, re, the attacker replays SOCI to the HN, where SOCI encrypts the target UE's SOPI. Then the HN will take all UE's as the target UE. In such attack scenarios, the target UE will reply with IES with a response. The non-target UE will reply with MAC failure. Next, I will introduce our solution denoted by 5G AKA prime as shown by the figure, where the difference with 5G AKA are marked by red. In particular, 5G AKA prime encrypts RAND with the key established by ECIES in the initiation phase. To be more specific, ECIES consists of an ECIES CAM algorithm and an ECIES DAM algorithm. The ECIES CAM algorithm established establishes temporary keys between the UE and the HN for each session. The keys are denoted by KUE and KHN. The ECIES DAM algorithm encrypts the actual payload with the key. In FileJK prime, the HN encrypts RAND with the key and the UE decrypts RAND with, that, with the same key. Only the encrypted RAND denoted by RAND frame is transmitted. Then the decrypted RAND is taken as the input for SIM card. It's obvious that neither the input nor the output of the authenticate command is changed. That is, FileJK prime provides SIM card compatibility. As SN only obtains encrypted RAND, in 5G AK prime, HXIS is calculated with RAND prime for comparison, and the HN also need to decrypt RAND prime for resynchronization. To preserve the message syntax defined by 3GPP, we employ an encryption scheme without ciphertext expansion and has a block size of 128 bit, that is, AES 128 in ECB mode, which provides SN implementation compatibility. 5 jk prime is resistant against failure message linkability attack and sequence number inference attack. In such attack scenarios, the attacker replaces RAND prime out n or RAND out n, where RAND prime is encrypted with the key used in a private session. But in, current, in the current session, HUE will decrypt RAND or RAND prime with the key in current session. Then the target UE will decrypt will decrypt with a wrong key and result in a wrong RAND, which cannot pass the check on Mac. The Nantuck UE will also fail the check on Mac. FLG AKA prime is also resistant against the encrypt SOPI replay attack, where the attacker replays SOCI. In such attack scenario, SOCI is encrypted with the key used in a private session. That is, HN will also use the old key to encrypt RAND. However, all UEs will decrypt RAND prime with the key for current session and reply with MAC failure. File JKA prime does not raise additional bandwidth cost as all ma as small message format preserves the same. It also in only introduces limited additional time cost from 200% to 300% as shown by the table. The migration from 5GAK to 5GAK prime may only involve the modification of about 20 lines of code for both endpoints. We also perform formal analysis for 5GAK prime with hammering prover. For the authentication and the secrecy goals, we follow the lemmas and the models established by Bethany and others for 5GAK and, and prove that 5GAK satisfies the goals for authentication and the secrecy as in 5GAK. For the privacy goals, we model the case of a target UE and a not target UE with respect to an old session by the target UE and prove that 5GAK prime is resistant to all known liquidity attacks. In this work, we propose 5GAK prime, which is a privacy preserving and standard compatible AKA protocol for 5G. It is resistant to all known liquidity attacks and is compatible with SIM cards and SN implementations. It may be deployed with only software modifications for both endpoints. Compared with 5GK, it only involves zero addition, it involves zero additional bandwidth costs and only involves 200% to 300% additional time cost. 
We hope that 5G AHA Prime can contribute to the next phase of 3GPP's 5G standardization process. That is all. Thanks for your attention.